from FingerLakes1.com. This is Inside the FLX. I'm Josh Durso, and today we're talking about Auburn, the city of Auburn. And in studio, we have the city's elected leader, Mayor Michael Quill. He's here to talk to us about some headlines, his time in office, uh, what's ahead, and maybe even what's changed uh, after serving in the middle of his third term. Mayor, thanks for being here today. Thank you for the invitation. So uh, I guess go ahead and start us out by telling us a little bit about yourself and how you actually got involved with politics as a whole. Sure. Uh, I was born and raised in Auburn. Uh, my family, going back to my grandfather, my great-grandfather, my uncles, they were all very involved in politics. And growing up, I just uh, thought that someday I would like to to give it a whirl. Uh, once I retired from the fire department in Auburn, I, uh, there was an opening on city council that, that I w- hoped for. Uh, that didn't work out, but there was also uh, an opportunity to run against a seated mayor, which I did. And uh, three times now we've beat him. So uh, he, I, I've got to give the man credit, though, Mr. Lattimore. He, he does have a great love for the city. He can never take that away. Just a different style and leadership between the two of us. How important is that uh, that love for the city, that love for the place where you're going to serve when it comes to this this level of public service? Because it is it can be a grind, right? Sure. Well, you, you have to know a lot about your city or as much as you can because you go to Wegmans or you know our grocery store. You're out and about in the community, and people ask you questions about all different topics. So you need to know about your city and and, and always take the uh, the positive attitude with their question, no matter. Uh, they're all serious questions in the mind of the individual, but you have to be respectful and uh, never promise them that you're going to change it, but promise them that you'll look in the situation, and uh, that'll save you a lot of grief. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, <clears throat> it's it, New Year, New Year for City Council, right. uh, fresh start. What uh, what are some of the things you're hoping to uh, tackle this year, or what are some of the, the items that you've been saying, you've looked at and said, okay, this is where we can kind of make some headway? Sure. Uh, first of all, uh, two of our counselors are returning this year. They're incumbents, uh, so that makes this will make the uh, the third year that the five of us work together, which is which is a great plus. Many big things is going on in our community. Auburn is is getting better. It's not getting bigger, but it's getting better. There's a lot going on. Uh, water quality is is a, is a big topic. From Wasco Lake, I'm sure it is with all the lakes, Hugo Lake, Seneca Lake. Uh, in fact, uh, Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul will be in Auburn today, uh, giving the governor's state of the, of the state address, which will be proved to be interesting. Uh, Auburn has seen a resurgence in the last few years. Uh, I don't want to take credit for it, but I do enjoy being a part of it. So there's a lot of good people working hard. But water, uh, different things the city does. For example, trash pickup. Uh, now we're, we have to come to a a decision about what we're going to do with our landfill and it's kind of appropriate we're in Seneca Falls here I know that's a hot button here in Seneca <laughs> yes, Falls uh, public safety our, our roads everything that every other community in upstate New York has we're faced with the same situation and they just it, it, they change in priority mm-hmm. Th- this week maybe the water quality next week it may be road improvement but that's what keeps us going and uh, after, we've learned to be flexible in how we handle them now, obviously, you just mentioned the, the landfill. Obviously, yep. your guys' situation in Auburn is a little different than the one that's playing out here in Seneca Falls. Correct. Uh, but how have you guys approached that, just in terms of the what you've brought to the table to address it so that it doesn't uh, spin out of control or become too uh, right. difficult a situation to manage? Uh, very, very basically, since I was a, I, since I was a kid, we, were, we had our landfill at the present site. Mm-hmm. And at this point... We're pretty much landlocked. We cannot expand it any further. Right. Uh, at the same time, it's very, very expensive working with the DEC uh, to do everything we're supposed to. So we've done the initial work, whether it's it's to try and purchase more property, to enlarge it, or to move on, uh, just to collect our refuse in, in, in Senate, whether it's here, Onondaga County, or wherever. There's no decision made on that. And I believe the council at this point is thinking that we should probably just pick up our trash as usual and transfer use, use the city landfill as a transfer station and mm-hmm. transfer it out from there. Now, uh, 
obviously Owasco Lake has made serious headlines over the last couple of years, but really it seems to have become an area of focus over the last six months to a year, right. uh, especially at the state level. Uh, what does the city need to do to ensure that Owasco Lake is taken care of? And at the state level, do you feel enough is being done to, to help you guys, to support you guys? Uh, the governor has really come around. He's always been in our corner. Uh, last year he came up with, uh, I forgot the figure, but we started uh, using, car, uh, I, can't, I can't think of the name of the, of, of the chemical that we're using, mm-hmm. but the water flows through that and it's helped eradicate or remove the uh the blue green algae right so the, that was thanks to the governor's help and the state legislator and providing the money uh in his, this year's state of state address the governor is pro, uh, asking for approximately 60 million dollars mm-hmm. for all the finger lakes to try and, and reduce the uh the cause of this blue green algae in the purification uh in the city of auburn there are approximately thirty thousand residents but we supply water to approximately sixty thousand people so if we lose our water supply we're there's other ways of doing it but none of them are on the drawing board in their years in the making so Mm -hmm. so it's very critical to us now uh obviously the governor's state of the state address was yesterday Mm -hmm. uh anything stand out to you in particular anything of particular interest that you heard during uh the state of the state that made you say oh that's that's good that's a good sign for us uh better yeah we have lieutenant governor kathy hochel in auburn is this afternoon and everyone is more than welcome to attend uh i want to hear firsthand as to what the governor is asking for and the lieutenant governor's thoughts and ideas as to how this will be implemented mm-hmm. and what it will be for the city of auburn and Cuba county now obviously uh the welcome center yes probably yeah. the the most interesting thing that obviously for us in seneca falls here uh, one popping up in Geneva, one popping up in Auburn, right. smack dab right in the middle of two of them. I just want to get your take on uh, your feelings on what that can mean for the city of Auburn. It, it, it can mean a lot for all of central New York. Uh, on firsthand experience, we've had people that we've met, say, for example, at the Seward Mansion, mm-hmm. and uh, they're looking for other things to do, not knowing who we, who we were, whether myself or one of our council members. And we tell them about the Seward Mansion or Willard Chapel or the Cuba Museum. They have no idea what we're what we're referring to. So hopefully this will uh, help in that regard. That there is more to do in Auburn and the Finger Lakes. Uh, it will be a cultural heritage center for all of Central New York. It will not deal just strictly with Auburn or Cuba County, uh, with the wine industry, uh, everything going on in our community and in, in our entire. Central New York area will be a, will be uh, spotlighted. Now, obviously, you must have some pretty strong feelings about the, the tourism uh, sector as a whole, seeing as how the entire region really benefits strongly right. from it. Uh, over your time as mayor, what, what has it been like sort of seeing that grow and seeing that morph into really uh, the, the region's strongest asset at this point? I don't think any of us. I'll go back to when I be, when I started as mayor. Uh, I'll speak for myself. Didn't realize what tourism meant to our community, mm-hmm. and then you start talking with the leaders in the tourism, uh, the visitor centers throughout Central New York and locally. The amount of tax dollars that the amount of dollars that are raised. A family coming in from, for example, Niagara Falls, stopping, filling the car up with gas, staying a night going to a couple of restaurants or whatever, it, it all adds up, and it, it is, it's a multi-million dollar industry. Mm-hmm. And we, were, we weren't getting our fair share, I guess, is the, the best way of saying that. Now, piggybacking off of that, what, what is the, or what do you think, if you were going to try and identify what a couple of the big changes were that you've seen beyond tourism, but just in how you've done your job and how you've seen people approach politics and approach government, uh, what's been the biggest change you're now in the middle of your three, your third term? Uh, downtown Auburn. That, that's that's been a huge change. Uh, we used to laugh not too many years ago on a Friday night you'd have uh, tumbleweed blowing through downtown Auburn, and mm-hmm. now you can't find a parking place. So that's that's one good indicator for most of us that things are are doing well in Auburn. Uh, limited tax increases keeping our public safety forces. In Auburn, we have a paid fire department along with with a police department, so that's expensive. 
but it's public safety, which which is important to us. Uh, just little things that add up to the great pick the grand picture. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, uh, the Shine Theater yes. in downtown Auburn, yes. uh, making some headlines now because it looks like it, it appears as though. Uh, some meaningful work is going to be done to begin rehabbing, restoring what once was. Uh, how important is that? Because that's one of those um, focal points in the middle of right. downtown Auburn. Right. That that could be a huge asset for you guys, right? Absolutely. Uh, many people feel that that is the missing link in downtown Auburn, uh, and I tend to agree with them. That's something needs to be done with that. Uh, for the record, the city of Auburn does not own or never has owned the Shines Theater. Many people uh, are confused on that and thinking, why is the city spending money on that? That's not the case. It's in the ho- It was in the hands of the uh, Cuga Arts Council. I'll be in trouble because I won't have that name correct. But it was in private hands. They are working now with a, uh, a firm to remove the asbestos. I went by there about 7 o'clock last night. They were still working at night. Uh, so they, they have to remove the asbestos. There's a lot of people who want to volunteer their time to assist in the cleanup, but it, the best asbestos abatement has to be completed first. So it, it, it's going to be another crowning jewel in, in the city of Auburn. It's going to be a place uh, just in the next few years become very well known for what it can do for the city of Auburn. So, What do you think the, uh, the trick has been for you guys in keeping downtown relevant? especially in a community where you have an arterial that can bypass you completely by the city if you so choose. Um, And a lot of people, you know, we'll hear a lot of people say to us, well, downtown, well, Auburn is just what you see on the arterial. No, there's so much of Auburn that you never even would see if you're just passing through. Uh, So how do you, how do you stop that from being the the predominant feature? The arterial? Yeah. Uh, Let's talk about the arterial for a minute and and not taking the blaming anyone but it was probably not a very good decision i think the city fathers at the time knew 30 years ago when they had that built they might have rethought it i think it hurt downtown auburn to a great extent we had some local businessmen who were very low-key they wanted to bring auburn back the way it was when they were when they were kids when they grew up in auburn with their families they were the uh, the impetus to get this started. They started in the one block area on State Street, and they started rebuilding that, remodeling that, and it just grew from there. Mm-hmm. Our uh, our business improvement district has been a huge part of uh, of the re, uh, reorganization of downtown, rebuilding of downtown. Uh, the lady that operates it now, she does a terrific job. It, it's almost like we have an event every weekend downtown. Mm-hmm. Do people want to be downtown? Want to do different things if they can find a parking place? But we'll, we won't. That's not a problem. There's a parking garage there. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I agree. With the arterial basically bisected the city, and, and I really believe that the city fathers at the time thought it was in the best interest, but it's really hurt us. Has the city essentially recovered from what that one-time loss might have been? Is, it, is thing have things improved downtown to a point now where you can say, okay? We aren't just fixing what was broken. We're we're growing. We're actually growing. Absolutely, absolutely. But I I don't want to say we're there yet because I never never right. want to give up. But we're continuously growing. Uh, in the next in the coming months, there'll be a few more stores opening downtown, mm-hmm. uh, and it, it'll be exciting. So. Now, I'm glad you said that because it does seem <clears throat> that there aren't too many closures, or that there aren't closures very often in downtown Auburn, and that seems to be the the strength of some. Uh, the downtown centers in the region that are doing well, it seems to be that they just they don't see the turnover. They right. see those long term uh, tenants. Is that the, is that sort of the key? Is that the I, key I think to people there? I think people when they want to open a business, they do a little more research in, into what could go on. And and there are there are closures. To be very honest, there are, but there's always someone waiting, wanting to do something different with the building, and they're very enthusiastic, and uh, they realize at this point. That Auburn downtown is the place to be. Mm-hmm. I have many friends in uh, in the Syracuse area, and they're always talking about coming to Auburn. In a different restaurant here, a different restaurant there, going to Finger Lakes Music Festival, up, you mm-hmm. know, up up to the Lake Mary Round Theater. So there's always something going on, and there's a constant turnover, but not so much a turnover of business. 
Now, one of the one of the headlines that we saw for a while, uh, I believe it was over the last two years, and then sort of disappeared a little bit, uh, involving the the headquarters of the police and fire department. Yes. Uh, what what is where does that stand right now? That whole discussion and debate, and where do you see it going in the the next several months? I guess we have to do something. The, the police fire station and the city's courthouse all need changes. Uh, I retired from the fire department, as I mentioned. Uh, the building was help give was partially given to the city in 1930, and it was built for fire trucks. They were they were, were as big to as a van era. today. Yeah. Yes. So the floor is becoming uh, overstressed with the weight of the fire trucks, becoming a safety issue. Mm -hmm. uh, the police station, uh, they've done some interior remodeling over last year, which has improved it. But now with the city council, we have to decide whether we're going to build a new fire station, police station, a combination, uh, where will it be, how are we going to pay for it, and so forth. And it, it's not something you just snap your fingers at and it's done. Uh, with the fire department. Fire departments work different from police. Police departments are on the road in different neighborhoods. Right. Fire departments are normally located in, in, in one area and they have to work out from there. Mm -hmm. So the roadway, obstructions, railroads, rivers, all that has to be taken into consideration. Uh, the courthouse, the, the court space, we presently lease from the county and that's costing a lot of money. They are running out of room. So uh, Office of Court Administration has told us we have to change our workspace. We need more space. We need storage space, different other things. So there's many items, many pokers in the fire at this point. Now, obviously, <clears throat> Auburn is not... Auburn is not uh, may not be growing in population, but uh, an expansive, a pretty large city, square footage, if you're going by that square mileage-wise... Uh, it seems as though the fire department and police department are an incredibly small footprint right. and in a very congested area. Right. Um, how much of a challenge is that from the first responders standpoint? Obviously you with the fire department must have some personal experience on that side. Well, there again, the arterial was built right in front of the fire station. So uh, that can be at the wrong time of day, that can be hectic hect getting out of it. You know, they, they, yeah. They try to help let the fire trucks go through or the police officers, but, but right. it, it is a concern. Uh, just the traffic patterns in Auburn have changed so dramatically because of the arterial, it, it, it makes it hard for the police and firefighters. Now, what is the, as we sort of wind down here, uh, what is your goal? What is your, If you have a couple big goals for this year that you're really hoping to uh, tackle or yourself start to push forward towards in 2018, what are those? Uh, water quality, that's, that's, I, that's number one, I believe, with the entire council. Uh, keeping our budget within limits, uh, it, it's, it's real easy to say we need a tax increase, and, but to justify it, everyone in central New York is, is strapped, paying for anything that we have, so we have to be very cautious of that. And I, I'm just very pleased to have my four returning council members. They're, they're a great council, and I enjoy working with them very much. How important is the continuity? Continuity is, is very important. And, and that's not to say that we're all a, a pushover for each other. We have our discussions. We have our disagreements. But you can do that in a professional manner and, and, right. and talk it out and uh, act like adults. Now, so you just you mentioned that, so I, I have to jump in. I have to sure. ask, how difficult is that in today's political climate? To, having 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 a group finding that group of people who can work together and as you say as you put it very well act like adults because yeah. it seems like that is if you, you talk to the average person who's just a casual observer of politics that's their one big gripe with it is that it isn't that way exactly yeah. I, I just I just myself and the city of Auburn I feel are very lucky to have the four council members and, and I'll say myself I don't mean it that way but mm. it, we do work together we come from all different backgrounds so we, we bring, every one of us brings something a little different to the table. People are going to, no matter what the headlines say, are going to read into it, say, oh, they don't get along, they're fighting, they're, you know. Or, mm -hmm. but, but that's not, it's not the case. We do disagree. We do. We have different ideas, but we work it out, and we work together for the betterment of the city. That's the bottom line. Addressing Washington or Albany, that's on a much larger scale, so I'm not the person to 
Is that the secret to local success in terms of politics is not try, not really getting involved in that that rougher fight and staying staying focused on what you guys can really affect what I, I think it's really a affect? good I think that's a good lesson in life yeah you know your parents when when you're young your parents told you pick your friends choosely or you know right. something to that effect and, and I think it carries through in life in your job you if you get hanging around with the uh, uh, the wrong group of people <laughs> You're probably causing yourself a lot of problems, concerns. So mm-hmm. I think it's a good, just a good lesson in life. Well, I really appreciate you uh, coming in today, obviously, and I'm sure we'll be having you back to talk more about all the things, all the great things going on in Auburn. Anytime. Please come over to Auburn and visit us. Absolutely. Well, that's going to do it for us today. I'd like to thank Mayor Quill, our listeners, and, of course, FingerLakes1.com for making this podcast possible. Inside the FLX airs Sundays at 7 p.m. on Spectrum Channel 12 and is available on iTunes, Stitcher, and the FingerLakes1.com app. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time. One time.